this is Karen from the Huntley Library. Welcome to our final uh, 12 Days of Crafting. Today we're going to be making blessing jars, which is a good craft for the new year. So we're going to gather some things and we'll get started. Okay, here are our supplies. You're going to need some kind of glass jar. It can be big like this mason jar I have here, or you can have something smaller like a jam jar size. Um, you're also going to need some paint that will adhere to glass. Um, the store was really picked over when I went over to get paint colors. Uh, this is some paint by Folk Art. It's for multi-surface multi paint. It's a satin paint. Um, you can use what you have, some kind of acrylic, and there should be information on the paint itself or on a chart at the store or if you're ordering it online on their website about whether it can be used on glass or not. And there's usually some kind of curing process to make sure that it stays on, um, especially if you're going to wash it. So you'll want to read those instructions and make sure that uh, for whatever purpose you intend to use your jar, you're going to have the right kind of paint for that. Um, I'm not going to wash my jar at all um, or put it in the dishwasher or anything like that. And I don't intend to get it wet, so I'm not as concerned with the type of paint I'm using. But um, some of the curing processes do involve either leaving it on for a really long time and or heat treating it or heat curing it. So be sure to read the instructions if, if that's a thing you're going to want to do. Um, you might also need a marker. This is a, a wet erase marker that I'm using um, or that I used on another project to draw my design on the jar first. So if you want to plot out your design and put that on your jar first, you could use a marker. Um, this also came off when I touched it, so you know you have to be careful with that. But it will come off easily too if you make a mistake, so that's a possibility. And um, you'll need a, a paintbrush for applying your paint, and also some water to rinse off your brush, and maybe some paper towels too to keep it clean. So I did a little research into what kind of design I might want to put on my jar, and I really like some of these um, ones that I found on Pinterest. So I'm just going to show you a few of them. There were some, this one was for a goblet and it had a sun and some stars and maybe a sky or an ocean. I like a lot of these repeating designs, motifs. Um, there was one with a cool tree. This one had a lot of different flowers and they did three different jars. You can use decorative jars for a whole bunch of different things. So if you're not into the blessings jar idea, then I have some other ideas for you. This one they used as like a to make a candle holder so you can illuminate it afterwards. I really like this one. That looks like stained glass so if you get the right kind of paint you can have it be um, transparent like that and really pretty. And then there were a bunch that were decorated with some gold sort of puffy, puffy paint. I'm not sure what kind of paint that is. Um, but you could probably create the same effect if you wanted to use glue and you weren't going to wash this at all because that would give it sort of a raised texture. And then here are a few other ones too. So just some ideas of things you could do. This is kind of cool. It looks like um, like a henna design that you might put on your hand or something. We've done a lot of henna at the library. This one was just a bunch of hearts. That would probably be a good design for blessing jars. Um, this one I like too, like scales, fish scales sort of, um, and that one would be pretty easy to do. You probably don't have to uh, stencil it out first. So those are some ideas for you. You Feel free to come up with your own. And then this is an example I made um, earlier, just to give you an idea. Um, I really liked the this shape that I found on another design um, or a picture that I found online. And so I cut out a little stencil and then I was holding it with like a finger and then tracing it with my uh, marker. And that was messy and very time consuming. So um, my recommendation, if you're gonna do something like that where you have to trace a little shape like this, it might be easier to put like a piece of tape on the back of it. The double stick tape is really great for that. And then it would hold it down easier and then you have more um, mobility to, to be able to trace it. Um, you would also want to probably set this down and have it in a position where it wouldn't roll. So keep that in mind if, if this is a design that you like. 
And after I, I painted all of those shapes in, um, I went over it with some gold paint and I tried to do an outline of it, but my, my paint is not textured like that other paint that I showed you in the pictures. So it's a little flat, but that's okay. And I think I'm going to go over it with some um, gold glitter paint too. I didn't do the whole jar either in this example. I left some of the words open and I think it looks kind of cool. Like maybe it's older and weathered and the design has come off in certain places, but it also gives me a nice little window into the jar too if I want to take a peek at what I'm putting in there. So that's another idea for you. All right, before you start painting or sketching your design out on your jar, um, you wanna make sure that it's clean, so be sure to wash it and dry it really well. And if you have rubbing alcohol, um, you can use some of that too to take off any soap residue that might be left over, and that will give you a nice surface for your paint to adhere to. I also have a little bowl of water here so that I can clean my brush, and I have a few napkins also here so that I can wipe my brush off if I need to. Um, and I found that when I was painting my jar, I didn't really want it down like this. I wanted to be, paint, to be able to paint all the sides at once and just kind of turn it around. So um, if you're sitting down at a table like I'm gonna be, you could get uh, a can or something else to put your jar on. So now it's standing up, I have this fancy thing of <laughs> vegetable shortening that I'm going to be painting on. So you can do something similar just so that it's up and sort of at eye level and you're not bent into a funny position while you're painting. It'll be more comfortable for you. So I think I'm going to um, do that fish scale design that I showed you earlier and uh, that one's going to be easy for me to draw and paint and I won't have to use a little stencil. So. Hopefully it will not take as long. So I'm just going to show you what I did with the pen. And if you're comfortable um, just painting this directly, then go right ahead. You don't have to do the marker. And then you don't have to worry about uh, the marker showing through afterwards either. I'm using, um, or I'm going to be using blue and purple paint and a turquoise too so it's not as critical for me to have to remove this blue marker from my design or from my jar so I'm just gonna keep doing this sort of repeating motif here all over my jar I'm gonna skip the um, the part with the raised letters here where it says ball so that I don't have to worry about covering that. And if this uh, sketching isn't working so well or you make a mistake, um, if you're using a marker like this dry erase one, you can just wipe it off and redo that part if you're unhappy with it. Or you can wipe the whole thing off. <laughs> So I'm going to keep doing that for a while, and if you have some other kind of design that you're doing, you can keep doing yours for a while, and then we'll meet back up here um, when we're ready, when we're finished with this design and we're ready to paint it. I'm going to start out with my jar here on the table just flat so that you can see what I'm doing, and I will move to my, uh, my can surface in a little bit so that I can prop it up and paint so it's easier for me, but for right now, I'm just going to do this. You don't need a whole lot of paint on your brush, especially if you have little tiny things that you're doing. Um, you can put the paint out on a palette if you want, if you have like a, a plate or something. Paper plate would be good. You can dispose of it too when you're done. And depending on how much paint you put on here, it, that'll affect how long it takes for the paint to dry. And I kind of like the translucent effect where I can see some of the light coming through the paint and it looks a little bit like stained glass. So I'm not going to put a lot of paint on mine, but if you want a more opaque effect, um, you can definitely use more paint or you could um, put on several coats maybe two or three, 
to make it really opaque. I don't want the same color right next to the scales that I've already done, so I'm going to space these out a little bit. Okay, so that's the, the basic idea. Um, it will vary, of course, depending on what your design is going to be. So I'll let you get painting, and I'll meet meet back up with you once I have more of this finished and you can see my progress, share your progress if you want to. I'm back with a progress update. So I've done some purple, that's the color I started with, and then I added some dark blue, and I still have a light blue and a turquoise to put on there. Hope your painting is also going well. Welcome back. This is my completed jar. I ended up doing two layers of paint, two coats, on um, all my little scales here. And I think I'm just going to do just a little bit of gold glitter paint over that. So let's do that together. And I just want a little bit of that over the top. I'm gonna, I don't really want the brush strokes on there, so I'm going to put it on with my finger. So this is the messy part if it hasn't already been messy for you. <laughs> and I'll get a little bit on there with the brush and then spread it out with my finger. You can add some metallic to your jar too if you want to. I'm just covering the spot where I already have paint down. I'm not getting into those areas where I didn't add anything before. So it kind of looks like it's burnished now. You could make it look more aged too if you did some like black or a darker color over all of this. Oops, that was kind of a lot in that one area. Okay. All right, and then I just have to let that dry, and that will be my jar finished. Um, and like I said before, if you're going to wash this or get it wet, um, then you're going to want to have it the paint cure longer. And uh, follow the instructions on the paint to do that. Clean up your area, your brushes and everything. So for those of you who have been wondering what is a blessing jar anyway, um, the idea behind a blessing jar is to write down memories or good things that happen to you in your life and maybe over the course of a year um, collect them all on, you know, just write them down on a little piece of paper, collect them all in your jar so you could write something like was finally for 2020 was finally able to see my grandparents or somebody else um, for the first time in a year or months or whatever and maybe that was a, a really good memory so you can just fold it up and then drop it into your jar and then over the course of the year this fills up and you can go back to it at the end of the year or whatever time frame you want to use or even if you're <clears throat> you just need to have some good thoughts in your life at some point you can go back through your jar and look at all of the things that you've written down to kind of remind yourself of your blessings and the good things that happen if that doesn't work for you, you still have this really cool decorated jar and you can do something else with it. It could become a vase if you've cured it and it can get wet. Um, it could also become a vase even if you haven't cured it. I guess you could have 
make, I mean, the water would be on the inside, so it could hold flowers. Um, you could put other things in your jar, like if you have projects that you want to work on throughout the year, you could write down your projects, so it's like a to-do list or something, and just stick those in there and then randomly draw a project for a day when you have some extra time. Um, sometimes people do New Year's resolutions, like things, goals or accomplishments that you want to achieve over the year. Um, so you could put those in there and then pull them out and see how you're doing or choose something to work on. Um, art ideas, writing prompts, those could be things that go in there. If you hear a good quote, that could be um, something that you write down and put in your jar. Um, it could be places you want to go or things that you want to do. Um, I saw a really cool idea for a game or kind of a year reflection where you write down um, questions about that you would then answer about the year that's just passed. So it could be like, name three things that made this year memorable. What challenges did you face? What was the hardest thing to overcome? Um, what things did you learn? What did you enjoy most about the year? Uh, what, how can you make next year better? It could be a snapshot of what your life was like at that time. So what's your, <laughs> what are your nicknames right now? Um, how old are you? Your favorite food? Uh, your favorite movie, favorite songs, favorite books, who are your best friends right now, what kind of things are you into, what are your hobbies, so anything like that. Um, those could all be uses for your blessing jar or your decorated jar. So I hope you had fun making these with me today and that you come up with a good use for your jar. You can always gift it to somebody else too and <laughs> maybe they can use it as a blessing jar. Thanks for joining me today for our last days of the 12 Days of Crafting. I hope you had fun making blessing jars with me. Yay! Um, for more fun craft ideas, please check out our website, www.huntleylibrary.org. I'll see you next time. Bye!